Welcome to Castle Coombe for what promises to be an action-packed weekend of motor racing from the UK's leading organiser of historic racing, the Historic Sports Car Club. 50 years ago at this very track, the very first Griffiths Formula race lined up to begin what would become a very spectacular and evocative motorsports story for the club. We'll be on the grid later in the show as the HSCC celebrates its anniversary by recreating that original race. They've even managed to secure some of the original cars and drivers as they go back to where it all began. The HSCC is about close and exciting racing with sports, GT, touring cars and single seaters from the 60s, 70s and 80s. The club's strapline is pure historic racing. Here's why. Now, Charles Bartle was described to me as the mentor for the road sports category, and I've managed to catch up with him in between qualifying and races. He's got this lovely Datsun you can see behind me. Charles, is that a fair description of your, your time here? <laughs> well, probably. Um, I joined the 70s series probably 20 years ago, so it, it, at its inception. Yeah. And uh, I've sort of, over the years, have really tried to develop that series with all the other competitors as well, of course. You can't do these things on your own. And I think we've actually now built a fantastic series, good entry level in certain classes for people to come in. And of course, cars we, many of us have used and driven many years ago. So. What I quite like looking around at the, the paddock for the road sport is the fact that it kind of reflects the classic car market generally because you've got the starter cars, you've got the 924s, you've got, you've got loads of lands which are now very worthwhile classic investments. You've got a full gambit of classic machinery, haven't you? We've got everything that was produced in, during that period. Um, at a full range, all different capacities, of, as you rightly say. It, yes, it reflects exactly the classic car market. And, and, and the people that want to buy the classic cars, they can see them here being raced as well. Now, this is the 50th anniversary weekend for the HSCC. You're obviously no stranger to the club and, and to this particular part of the championship. But to be part of this, this whole celebration of motor racing, as it was pure historic racing, as the club says, that must be something pretty special. Oh, it is very special. I mean, I was very lucky in... In my youth, my my parents dragged me around every race meeting. We used to come here to Castle Coombe. We used to be able to go abroad to Monza and places like that. So it's always been in my blood. Um, but to be part of the HSCC and be involved in their anniversary year, and for my sins, I sit on the board as being chairman of the 70s Road Sport uh, Championship. So I've tried to help and assist wherever possible. You know, we're so lucky to have somebody like Graham White heading up this club. It is amazing what that guy does, uh, plus all the other staff in the office as well, of course. First race of the Historic Sports Car Club's 50th anniversary celebrations here at Castle Coombe sees the race for the 70s road sports cars, with the lead being taken straight away by the TVR Tuscan of Peter Shaw, followed by the two Lotus reigning champion Jim Dean in his Lotus Europa and Julian Barter in the Lotus Land S4's pole position man, Will Leverett with his red Porsche 911 SC falls away. So it's the TVR from the two Lotus initially as they draw away from the pursuing pack, the two 1600cc Lotus Ford twin cam Lotus going side by side there. Jim Dean hanging onto the place at the moment as the TVR head locks up and blows smoke over the two Lotus. Now as they come through Old Paddock, it's the TVR just ahead using its superior power from its larger engine at this stage to draw away from the Lotus. Now, turning into the right-hander, coming towards the end of the lap, uh, it is there uh, through camp. Meanwhile, back in the pack, making tremendous progress from the very back of the grid in his Lotus 7 Series 4. Uh, Stephen Cook, as spinning out of his way, goes the Porsche 924 of Brian Jarvis. No damage done. Uh, meanwhile, the other red Porsche, but the rear engine car, number 19 of Will Leverett, carries on his way to fourth place. Out front, it is still Peter Shaw leading from the Lotus. Still in second place, Jim Dean. In third place is Julian Barter. Side by side, the Lancia and the TVR, Johan Dennerkamp and Mark Oldfield in the Lancia and the TVR loses it. And spinning in sympathy, Alan Hersey with the Reliance Scimitar GTE. Back at the front of the field, it's still the TVR, Peter Shaw still blowing out smoke at his pursuers. The order has changed. It's now into second place, Julian Barter. He's got ahead and almost losing it there in his attempt to regain his second place there is Jim Dean of the Rose Europa. A well-held moment there. And the number 16, 
reliant of Alan Hersey having had the spin now expires and I'm afraid a cloud of smoke and it is left for Julian Barter to take the lead and win the race from in second place Peter Shaw uh, with the TVR Tuscan coming through there the Lotus Elan ahead of the still smoky TVR of Peter Shaw coming through now to take the checkered flag and win the opening race of the weekend in second place Peter Shaw Julian Barter the winner well Julian you made that look easy good fun uh, very good fun and uh, it wasn't easy because the boys were on it all the time Jim Dean came from nowhere at the start great move up on the inside of me and then I just knew I had to then fight for it but uh, fortunately James Dodds uh, Europa broke on, must have been on the start because he would have been uh, right at the front so shame he went but uh, you three in the league of your own back there though well, yeah, it seemed to be it seemed to draw a gap out, but um, we're so busy fighting with ourselves to start with. But until you get the break, you can then uh, and then move on a bit. But uh, great result, well done. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Now, someone else who can talk to me about what the HSCC is all about is the former chairman of the club, Chris Sharples. Chris, you sat here in your race cars. This is the lowest interview we'll do today. Up until the beginning of last year, you were chairman for nine years. I was, yes. Loved every minute of it. Loved every minute of it because it's a fabulous club. And it's just, I think it's just tremendous that they're celebrating 10 year, uh, 50 years here. And um, the club was set up back in 66 to try and protect cars which were being bastardised, which were being sent off to the United States. I notice on the grid here that 11 of the original cars are still here. I've got a feeling we've actually done a good job. I think you might have. And you know what? I was talking to the lady Penny, Penny yeah. Griffiths, as she was then, she who flagged the cars off and yeah. she flagged them off today. Yeah. And it was this is exactly what her dad wanted to create, as you say. Yeah, no, and it's it done a fantastic job. And the, the, the nature of the cars has moved on so that... Um, You'll find cars at our race meetings from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. Uh, I don't think we've really moved much into the 80s yet. But again, the motivation is essentially the same. It's trying to preserve those cars, proper cars, in the condition that they raced in, uh, in era. And um, you'll see Formula 3 cars running with us, Formula 2 cars, 5000s, um, really the whole gamut of uh, historical racing. And... The other, the other important thing that sometimes f people forget this is that that focus on the cars essentially bonds all of the people in the club together so that when we go onto the grid racing these cars, we really don't want to damage them. And that creates um, a sense of camaraderie amongst the members. I think it also helps with the safety standards and makes it a better recreation. Because at the end of the day, everyone's here to have a good time on a race circuit and go home with their car with their car undamaged and themselves unhurt and enjoyed themselves. And I think the, the historical component is something that really delivers that. The future of the HSCC and therefore the future of historic racing, another grid like that in 50 years time, much bigger I'm sure, relies on getting young blood, yep. new people through into the club, not just looking at modern yep. race series. What do you do, what does the club do to get new people in and how can people get started in this sport with the HSCC? Well, the, the interesting thing to observe is that the future is history. Um, and, and it's because this is a very economic way to go motor racing. I'm sitting in a Formula Ford car that you can buy for £20,000. Um, you can run this thing um, for a multi-thousand-pound budget. It's not as expensive as running in any of the modern, the modern series. And what's been delightful with the HSCC over the past probably 10 years is we have got a lot of younger people joining. Um, got a lot of people who are um, sons, maybe daughters of people who race already uh, and somewhat frustratingly in front of me on the grid I see quite a lot of those people but we've also found that um, we've had people coming across probably in their 30s and 40s who've been running in Caterham, Radical, you know those sorts of modern series where they've been paying a huge amount of money and not having as much fun as they can have in one of these cars and why I say the future is history is that the big component in historical racing, which is totally different from that in modern racing, is your car never becomes one year old. It starts 40 or 50 years old. You will end up selling your car for more money than you bought it, or at least the same. If you take that out of the commercial equivalent of a, a Radical or a Caterham, whatever, they start to look very expensive. This looks to start, starts to look very, very cheap. So I think really the future is, is history. If you're going to go motor racing, why not go racing in a formula where the cars are guaranteed investments and the racing is exciting, close,
but safe. Why not go historic racing with a club that focuses on pure historic racing and a heritage that lasts for 50 years. 50 years ago, on this very weekend at this very racetrack, historic sports car racing started with the HSCC. The 50th anniversary celebrations are only just getting underway. So make sure you get to an event organized by the Historic Sports Car Club at some point this season at a racetrack in the UK near you. Thanks for joining us.